Welcome back to another edition of The Devil's Lair. I'm your co-host, Randy Meadows. I am Mike Tucker, your other co-host. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're, we're in The Devil's Lair, so we'll jump right in, Mike. The Blue Devils had a huge game uh, Friday night against Coffee County Trojans. Coffee come to town. Uh, Hard-fought ball game. Cool. Um, we come out victors. I think it was 32-29. And... Uh, it was just a, a phenomenal game, man. Really good. You know, it was pleasing as a, a fan. Obviously, we come out on top. But right. uh, what would you take out of the game Friday? Well, you know, it, it's – well, we start with the first drive. You know, Tifton got the ball, went three and out, punted. And I think Coffee may have got a first down on their first possession, and then they had to punt, and then Tifton scored. You know, of course, Coffee answered right back. Uh, same thing in the second quarter. So we go into <laughs> halftime, you know, tied up 14 all. And uh, you thinking that me as a fan, I'm thinking, hey, a turnover here or something is going to be the difference in the ball game. And come to find out, that's you know that that's what it was. It seemed like it. <clears throat> it um, really did. But it was uh, like you said, it was a good game, strange game at the end. Uh, and I know we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, but uh, you know, first victory, region victory. Since 2010 for the Devils. Yeah. Um, Just a big win, man. And <clears throat> we were uh, – I was excited to see the kids were pumped up. The fans were pumped up, you know, by the end of the game. They were. Um, it just uh, an atmosphere and a feeling we haven't had in Tiff County in a while. Yeah. It, it, to me, it almost felt like uh, 2006 when, you know, Tiff made it all the way to the Dome. Yeah. It was that type of – and that's what we need to get back to. That's right. Um, you know – more support in the stands. Need to fill up the stands. Yeah, there um, there was still some empty seats for the night, man. I was a little disappointed by that. Yeah, uh, in the reserve section, still needs. You know, all them seats are not full. Uh, the outer skirts, uh, which now we had a good number of people on on the visitor side. We did. There there was so, a lot over there. Sure was. But um, now the coffee brought a good crowd too. They really did. I was I couldn't believe that. I hadn't seen that many people on that side in, in a while. Yeah. So maybe a playoff game. But they travel well anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well we have uh you know, we've built uh, a pretty good rivalry with coffee. And I, I've mentioned before that our kids seem to see view coffee as our biggest rival. I think so too. And that's fine. Um, oddly enough, though, uh, setting up a, a precursor to the weekend or to Friday night, I read in the Moultrie Observer that, you know, Tiff County is Moultrie's oldest, I'm going to say oldest rival. Right. And so it kind of kind of lets me know where their head's at right now going into Friday's game. They're, you know, for those of you who don't know, we play Moultrie, right. Caulk County Packers, and we play them Friday night. So... That's where their head's at. So, you know, we, we had a big win. Uh, we need got to zip it up and look forward to Cockwood. And, you know, now we should expect to win every time out because yeah. we can do it. It's there. Yeah, I read a post, uh, an article in Moultrie Observer uh, today. And, you know, and Prost was talking about he was shocked that Tifton actually won. You know, they call it an upset. You know, you and I both know that Tifton was going to win. You know, we predicted it right here. But, yeah. uh, you know, he said that, you know, and then they went down and beat Lowndes like they did. And uh, he said, you know, short-lived. He said, Saturday, we was thinking about Tiff County. So by now, you know, Tifton is not going to be flying under the radar, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, that was kind of the hopes that maybe – and you know what? they Coming off that victory against Lowndes, they beat them like 31-7 to seven or something like that. Something like that. 7 I can't remember the, the score, but they, they beat them pretty handily. And uh, I feel like we still might – to. To the coaching staff, will never fly under the radar. But to right. the kids, maybe, you know, sometimes your coach says something, but kids ain't going to listen sometimes. Yeah, you're talking about 14, 15, 16, yeah. 17-year-old kids. Yeah, uh, so hopefully that's where their mindset is over there, and we can sneak up on them and, and bust them in the mouth. That'd be great. Um, oddly enough to me, this game, to me, it's – it was like Thomasville. We don't necessarily have to win this game, but, man, it would sure be nice. Right. This it, one would it, sure it, be nice. I tell you what, the winner of this game, well, you take, uh, if Tinton can win, you know, that puts them 2-0 oh in the region. So, I mean, that's that would be pretty strong right there. Yeah. Uh, somebody, you know, with the splits like they was Friday night, uh, somebody's going to come out 2-0. and oh, 
uh, and kind of being, I don't know if you necessarily call it the driver's seat, but in this region, anybody can win on any Friday night. Uh, unlike some of the other regions around the state where you've got one, maybe two powerhouse teams. Yeah, um, that's true. Um, real big game Friday night. Um, well, let's, let's get back to the coffee game because okay. there's a couple of things I, I do want to point out. Um, you mentioned last night when, when you and I were talking about the, the, the show in general, um, a kid whose name was called a lot, uh, like Friday night mm-hmm. on the defensive side of the football, and that's Zach Abbott. Zach Abbott. Yeah, he was a ball hawk and, you know, doing all this as a freshman. A freshman. True freshman. True freshman. <laughs> well, age-wise, <laughs> yeah. Age-wise, he could be a sophomore. Yeah, I guess uh, he could, age-wise. But, I mean, you know, he is a true sophomore. A uh, freshman, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and, you know, two weeks ago he was playing on the ninth grade football team. And uh, now he's starting on the varsity level, which, you know, I mean, for the folks that know the Abbott name, they know his older, two older brothers, uh, Josh and uh, Alex. Yeah. You know, Josh was a standout middle linebacker for Tiff County, and uh, Alex is the same thing on the baseball field. Right. Um, And plus their daddy, Bryce, you know, back when they played football 100 years ago, you know, he played and went to Florida State and played. Uh, So, I mean, football (laughs) is in their blood. Yeah. you know, I heard one of the coaches say on on Zach that you know he is just a natural. He, he's going to be where the ball's at. Um, you know, I've I've talked to folks that coached him at rec ball. Uh, he's just got that mentality that he's going to be around the ball. What's crazy is <laughs> I haven't seen him since Pee Wee football, right? And so this little white kid's running around like crazy. I didn't know it was him, and then. I heard him say Abbott over the the PA, and I'm like, no, there ain't no way. <laughs> and uh, he come off the sideline, took his helmet off, and I was like, oh my gosh, I did not realize that he yeah he's, he's growing up to be a he, man. He shot he? up, yeah. He's uh, last time I talked to him, I had to look up to him. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's he's taller than I am. Uh, so good, good for him. But yeah, he's he's making a, a big impression and doing some some really big things. So um, the other thing that stands out to me was. With about, I don't know, I think we had a minute and a half left in the game. Mm-hmm. We were driving, and uh, Wedgeworth threw about a 40 to 45 yard bomb to um, Malik. Uh, I can't remember which Pittman. Malik. It was a Pittman. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Pittman. Um, yeah, threw a, threw a bomb to Malik Pittman, and he caught it in the end zone, and we went up. But what was impressive about it was there was a, it was a great throw, had good protection. He threw the ball up. <clears throat> he threw it to the back shoulder. He did. The only person that could catch that ball was, was, Malik. was, was Malik. And he went up and made a, a good coverage. Right. But the ball was thrown right where he could catch it. And it was a D1 throw, a oh, yeah. D1 catch, too. Oh, yeah. He went over the top and got it. And it just was, man, I was thoroughly impressed. Um, and not only that, uh, they called the defensive guy for defensive pass interference. And Malik still caught the still ball. Still caught the ball. That's so, right. I know, forgot that, about that. That's one of the win-win situations. Either, either way, you're going to get good yardage, but we would definitely rather have had a six out of it. That, yeah, definitely. Um, but Wedgeworth went twelve for uh, nine for 12 with 114 yards. And I think we said last week that Wedgeworth has to throw the ball. He has to. And he it. did. He, he threw did. enough to be effective. Um, we only, Ladarius Stewart had like 89 yards rushing, mm-hmm. which is a little down for him. But we had some some good plays going on, and coffee man, coffee's tough. They, they play are. great defense. Uh, you know, I read our good offense. They're they're young, kind of like we are, because we're young in a lot of spots. So you know, both of these programs are on the up and up. Um, you know, coffee has been down for years, so, you know, just like Tiff County has. So yeah. you know, it's good to see two programs like that getting back into competitive football on Friday, not especially in this region. Yeah, I, that that was. That was really nice. So, um, a great game. Played very well. Um, as a matter of fact, AJC had took notice of it. Oh, yeah. And, and wrote a little article on it. Well, they wrote a blog about it, and uh, it's, it's talking about Tiff puts a new wrinkle in, in Region 16A. Yeah, I read that, too. Did you read it? Yeah. And um, but, it was a pretty good pretty good column. So, uh, just talking about how Tiff went in and, and really upset. Nobody gave Tiff the chance Friday yeah. night. And we went in there and punched them in the mouth. So, uh, congratulations to them guys. Some kids played well. A lot of good things going on. And uh, 
Another big game this week, man. Yeah, but, you know, it, I talked about earlier about the strange things that happened. You know, we scored, or they was actually 21 points scored there in like the last two minutes of the ball game. Yeah. You know, uh, Tiff scored, got the interception, scored again, and then kicked the ball off and took off, and he ran it back to the one, and then they score, you know, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, you got a three-point lead with what, I think, less than a minute to play. And uh, matter of fact, I remember the group I sat with Friday night Noticed, because uh, you knew what was coming. You knew Coffee well, was out of timeout, so onside kick was coming. Sure. And uh, looked out, and they sent the two offensive linemen out there. And I, and I'm, hey, I'm first to admit, I my th- statement was, why would you send two offensive linemen out there? We come to find out, one of them is Mr. Blake Suggs, which is the first baseman for the baseball team. Uh, as as it, if you was there, you know. The first onside kick, they called Tifton for offsides or or something. And he he was this far off. You know, but you know Blake recovered that one, and then they tried it again, kicked it to him again, and he recovered it again. So, uh, you know, the article I read in the Tifton Gazette was talking about soft hands. They talked about Malik Pittman had soft hands. You know, so did you know uh, Blake Suggs. Scooped it up, knew enough to you know to scoop it up and fall down on it and trying to be a hero and run the ball. That's right. Because uh, at that point, all you got to do is take a knee and, you know, then let the what happened happen. Uh, what scares me when you got high school kids out there, and I've been guilty of it playing video games, and you get an onside kick, you want to run it. You want to run it. No matter where it's you, at. You, you want to run You're going to take it and try to score. That's right. And these kids see that, and I worry they try to, to right. do the same things. And but that's where coaching comes in. Yeah, well. Hopefully. It's like I said, sometimes kids don't listen. Well. <laughs> Yeah, I've coached so the other year right they don't. But you know, Blake did the right thing. And that that's where you gotta put team before self. Yeah, that's right. Uh, comes and Blake comes from kid. a good family. That's right. Uh, I know his daddy was one proud daddy after the game. Oh, that's hard, fine. man. They they played really well. I was I was I was I was a little surprised. Um, oh, you know, that first drive really I was like, Oh no, this is not gonna bode well for us right. and then they come out, like you said, got a first down, maybe two for I can't remember. Moved the ball a little bit, yeah. got maybe to midfield. Lo and behold, they went three and out, and I was like, all right. We got the ball back, and things seemed to kind of go our way. So our special teams, punt team, it seemed like we were always one block away from breaking that, yep. that touchdown. So, And, you know, Mr. Gann had another good night punting yeah. the ball. Um, I talked to his daddy and asked him what his ad punt average was because week before last it was, I said, what was his punt average? He said 55. I said, really? He said, yeah, 55. I said, I guess it, it seemed mediocre to me because I'm just so used to it. Now. Right. So this week was 45, and I was like, we well, tell him to do better. But that's phenomenal. There's a lot of yeah. pro punters that don't have a 45, uh, net 45 punt. And, you know, they was one of them. And I don't remember if he kicked it. I know one time Redsworth dropped back on a fourth down, and he actually punted it, and it rolled down to the one. I mean, you cannot ask – for any better punt. And I, like I said, I don't remember if it was Mason that done it or it was Wedge. It was Wedge, yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, you know, for the game, a game that close for it to turn either way, I mean, it could have went Coffee's way or our way because, uh, you know, we had a two-turner, had a fumble recover and a big interception uh, there on the, uh, the last Coffee drive they had. But, you know, that ball game could have went either way. It was uh, – a little closer than what I thought, but hey, the tight end hey was we want to know in the region. That's all it matters. That we, we sure are. So. Uh, that tight end was wearing us down that seam. Oh, my goodness, he was killing us. So, luckily on that last drive, man, we had somebody in position to come. Yeah, he just, just stepped in front of the ball. And, uh, you know, and he's – he had, uh, his nickname is J-Rock. Uh, I cannot call this – that's all I've ever heard him well, call. But, you know, he, he's a sophomore. Yeah, I heard Coach so, on the sideline hollering for him, mm-hmm. and uh, and they they stuck him in right there at the end, and man, did it pay off! Yeah. He he really he phenomenal job. So, um, <clears throat> what else you got? Well, what you think about uh, you know, we talk about rivalries, you know, and, and the game kind of got ugly. Uh, yeah, that's where, where I was headed. That's where uh, I was headed with that. I'm sorry, but you know, there was a lot of shoving that, on both sides of the ball. Uh, we weren't all innocent. You're right, right. Tiff County had some too. Uh, 
But when you play when or your rival like that, and there's that much emotion going on, sometimes teenage boys, you know, they, they get a little out of hand. <laughs> I think Tifton did a better job of controlling it than Coffee did. Uh, I know, for instance, uh, and I don't know the kid's name, he was number five for Coffee, but he was on the sideline when the last big skirmish broke out. And I looked up, here he come, and the coach actually run him down and stopped him and escorted him to the – Locker room. To the locker room. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the referees threw anybody out, which is is a good thing for both teams. Uh, you know, that late they could have done a better job of controlling that game. Well, too. they could. And I feel like the referees did lose the game. Uh, yeah. I know Coach Reed and one of the officials got nosed and well, it wasn't quite nose to nose, but, uh, you know, they was heated. And, you know, there was a lot of calls that that guy that you could obviously see from the stand. But there again, you know, in the stands, you're always right. That's right. Them guys do do a, a good job for the most part. Um, uh, I, I but I think they did did let the game kind of – and they, there again, it was one of them deals where they let the kids play. But that fine line, I think they went a little too far. If my, my wife is ever around, she says, Randy, will you please quit it, uh, calling these football games? Mm-hmm. Quit officiating, quit refereeing. And I'm like, that gum. And then my buddy Tracy, he does the same thing sometimes. You got a buddy? Go ahead. Well, he might not appreciate me saying that, but you didn't call his last name. So. I did not. I did not. And uh, so Friday nights, I, I mean, I've been making a conscious effort to not say anything this year. Man, Friday night, I had more people asking me questions about it, rules and officiating and right. and whatnot. So while we're here, I'm gonna clear up something. This is this is a horse collar, but it has to be tackled to the ground and change your momentum. You can grab it, pull them, let go. It's not a horse collar. I'm messing up sound, Dana. I'm sorry. So, uh, so you you can take and uh, pull pull them there, but you have to tackle them to the ground and change their momentum. So, if you're coming at me right now, and I grab you inside the horse collar and I just fall back with you, I haven't changed your momentum. Right. Not a flag. Now, the first deal, whenever we were going in, apparently well, we got flagged for. It. We were flagged for. I didn't see it, but then there was another one that was back towards the south end zone. That, right, that we got flagged that for. we got flagged right. for, and I don't believe it was. I, I don't remember. That was that was happening just about where we were sitting at. There again, we're sitting 30 rows up. Uh, to me, it didn't look like he was inside the, you know, where to be collared. But, you know, there again, you got a guy down there that got a better view than I did. And, <coughs> You know, I think that's what set Coach Reed off. Uh, well, the rule, was, the intent of the rule is to keep the player safe from right. being tackled. Right. Because so many people was blown out knees and that kind of stuff. So look at the intent. Okay. So maybe they're right here, not quite inside, right. but it's it's around the collar. And if you're changing momentum, then you're you're adjusting the body. And it, it could become a safety issue. Mm-hmm. That it's more likely it's going to be flagged. So has to be tackled and change momentum. So they tried to simplify that rule this year. So and also helmet to helmet uh is not a rule in high school either. Right. So um, But it's coming. It's coming, that's right. It just it hasn't is. trickled down yet. So um I know one of the Maliks had a I think it was Pittman that had a no Henry. Which one was number two? Henry. Henry. He he had a big hit against him in Thomas County Central. Yes. And people were raising sand about it. It was legal. Um, I didn't like the way the kids celebrated after I didn't the fact, either. but he he calmed it down quick after yeah. he realized you know he didn't realize he had possibly hurt him. So um, yeah, he got his bell rung pretty good. That game. Yeah, um, he I was shocked that he bounced back from it. So um, yay, good for him, strong so, kid. So but it, it very intense rivalry. Um, from a fan standpoint, you have to kind of like it, but from a safety standpoint, you kind of don't. Um, you know that we were talking in the stands. When you shake hands, you keep your helmet on. Oh yeah, <laughs> you don't ever take that helmet off. And somebody because yeah, you coffee, don't never know. Somebody from coffee had their helmet off. But you know, it was like, a couple no. years ago when we played over there that uh, the same thing happened, and they actually had the the police, which the police was on the field Friday night, uh, and that should never happen at a, at a high school sporting game. Period. Never. You know, uh, it should never get to that point. But, you know, a couple of years ago in Coffee, the same thing happened. They actually had to escort the Tiff County fans and players off of the – well, the players off of the field. Uh, so, I mean, the rivalry is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's good in football, any sport. But 
you can take it to that next level to, you know, somebody could get hurt. Uh, you know, you take some of these proteins, Oakland, you know, you hear folks out there actually getting killed. Killed and stabbed. You know, because, because somebody had the wrong jersey on. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, you know, how close are we to that? Yeah, I know. Uh, I hope it don't come to that, uh, but you never know. That's right. It, it's got to be all in fun and, and in, within the spirit of the game. Right. It gets lost sometimes by fans, parents, players, right. coaches every now and then. A lot. Anyways. <clears throat> so good. I got we got the Packer Hogs going over there Friday night. Going to the hog pen. Chance of rain. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, maybe good. I don't know. A hog loves slop money. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, but. you do. You sure do. So um, we. Uh, <laughs> oh, we'll edit, not, I, we'll edit that out. I don't, don't care. Anyways, well, we, hey, <laughs> I'm me. We. Uh, uh, are you going to the game Friday? Night? Definitely. All right, good. What time should I be ready? Uh, we leave at about 5.30. We oh tailgate. Gosh. We All right, I'm right. in. You know, food, come on. Steaks, what do y'all tell? You, you'll find out when you get there. It's whatever <laughs> you bring. The answer's going to be hog. <laughs> we'll cook well, no, the we, whole hog. Well, okay, I missed that one. <laughs> That's okay. You know, but I'd rather grill a steak before the game and uh, let the devils have some hog on the field. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There's an answer we're looking for. You know. Let's That's, let the boys enjoy the hog. I agree. So, well, what else happened in the region Friday night? Well, you know, coffee. Oh, uh, not coffee. Uh, Colquitt went down the lounge. And I've got a buddy that uh, we on Friday nights. Oh, you, know, you got a buddy? I got a buddy. Kind of okay. like, you, you know, that imaginary friend you got, Tracy. <laughs> Somebody was texting me back anyway. <laughs> but we text all football season, you know, back and forth scores. And he texted me to score, you know, that, that lounge was down by seven. And that was pretty quick. And then next thing I know, it's He's down by 14. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of felt like Mulcher would go down there and, you know, because of the deal that happened last year or two years ago with the binocular spine deal. And I thought Prost would have them boys ready to play. And uh, the score kind of shocked me, though. You know, 37 to 7. Yeah. I didn't think they'd go in their house and beat them. Matter of fact, I think I read somewhere that that was the worst Lowndes has lost at home in like 15 years or something. Uh, it's been but, a while since they've been beat like that. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, kind of beat like they stole something. But, but yeah, I mean, 37 to 7 is bad, but I mean. You get beat by 30 in your own house? Yeah. I guess because it's lounge is why. Yeah. So. And then um, the other one, you know, uh, Valdosta, Valdosta, Valdosta yeah. went to Camden and actually had to lead late in the ball game, 10 7. And I don't really know what happened there, but, you know, the Wildcats. The Blue Wildcats uh, pulled out a touchdown late and wound up winning 14-10. Uh, so actually, I had picked Val Austin to win that game. Well, a lot of people did. I think everybody did except Camden. And yeah. that might have been a little bit of the problem, too. Just because they lost to North Gwinnett, we just assumed they're, they're down. You they're know, down. But you know what? North good. Gwinnett's a good team. Oh, yeah. So um, I kind of thought the same thing. And, you know, I guess it's safe to say Camden's for real still. I mean, they're – we, I think so. I, you know, I don't think they're as explosive as they has been. You know, especially last year. Uh, I don't think they have eight D one prospects on offense, and I think all eleven of them on defense. Yeah, like they had last year. So, I mean, that tells you right there that anybody in this region can play with them. They're not going to be the dominant team, in my opinion. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, and then you know you got the team that nobody's talking about, Brunswick. Brunswick, which was off. Which was off. So that's right. They start this week with Lowndes at home. Who knows what they got? You know, they lost sixteen, uh, six to four to a decent Ware County team, mm-hmm. twenty to thirty five to Wayne County, who's a little better. Not, I'm not saying they're Lowndes, but then they beat Groves forty six nothing in Glen Academy thirty two fourteen. So who knows what Brunson who knows? has? Who knows? And, They've and had a going, week to prepare. They, they go in and beat Lowndes. Lowndes is out. I mean, well, I don't see them bouncing back from that. I don't know if they're out, uh, but they definitely be on the road playoff time. Uh-huh. You know, it could be that they're, they're through. You know, this Friday night, not a loss this Friday night, if you're at 0-2, it just makes that the rest of the schedule so much tougher. <coughs> uh, Excuse me. Yeah, our friend Bryce Johnson said Friday night, uh, when I was headed to the stadium, I was listening to his pregame. He said, "He said there's three games tonight." He said, "Whoever loses these first games are out of the playoffs, essentially." 
And then I sat back and started thinking. I was like, no, he crazy. And then I started thinking about it some more. I said, man, he might just be right. I uh, mean, you know, it's still a little early. I think so. There's a lot of football left. I mean, you know, that's that's the first. We still got, what, five region games to <laughs> yeah. go. Uh, that's the good news and the bad news is. It is. You know, so. Um, but the good news is we are on top of the world looking down on creation, like the carpenter said. Um, Camden's one to know, Colquitt one to know, and Tiff County Tiff one County. to know. Everybody else is over and over one. This so, time last week, nobody would have thought Tiff would be tied for first place in the region. Yep. So um, I thought we might accidentally get a number 10 nod in the – this this week's polls. We're considering we beat the number ten team. Yeah, in the I thought polls. we might flip flop with them, but we didn't. So, but that's okay. I guarantee if we win this week, we'll be there. Yeah, because I think Moultrie is maybe number third, two or three. I can't remember. Uh, I thought you had a top ten. Yeah, hey, I, I do. Let's go through it. You want to? Well, might as well. Since we uh, class six six A, you got North Gwinnett at four and zero. Got McKeachin at five and zero. Oh. You got the Hogs from Moultrie at four and one. Lovejoy, which their only loss come to Colquitt at four and one. You got Peachtree Ridge at five and zero. Oh. Uh, sixth place, you got Camden County four and one. Hillgrove four and zero. Oh. Archer five and zero. Oh. Milton, which I read an article on them, said the first time they've been uh, ranked in the top ten ever. Uh, and then you got Norcross at three and two, which kind of shocks me with them getting beat, you know, get, like they did against that uh, Booker T. Washington out of Miami school, you know. Yeah. You hang 50 something points on a team, and then you're, you're top 10 in the state. They, uh, I have a problem with that. Well, Peachtree Ridge plays uh, Collins Hill this week, so that could be a very interesting uh, game. Yeah, you got it, it on, it's on, you got on later. That okay. we're going to talk about later. Okay, um, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, they're both undefeated. so Right. And I don't know who North Gwinnett has. I was just right there. Uh, Why don't I look at it? I looked at it. Uh, not going to call it a cupcake, but it's, it's a, it'll be a win. Oh, they played Duluth. Yeah. Or as my Which friend. Which I think is one in. I got a friend who lives in Sylvester. She calls it Duluth. And two <laughs> friends. Mm. Yeah. I didn't say her name at all. Oh, it's, okay. It's Sylvester. They they could probably even weed out some people to figure out who it is, and then she would be embarrassed that she knew me. So, um, I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> well, good. Well, what do you want to talk about now there, Mike? Uh, what is You want to talk about the rest of the region? Or? Let's talk about it. Uh, which I think Barron was off this week. Um. Uh, and be honest with you, I don't know. What about Thomasville? Tom, which one? Central? No, uh, Thomasville Bulldogs. Didn't right. they have a big game this week against? Who did uh, they play? Uh, I got it right here. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. Cook. Yeah, they won 21-14 against Cook. That's right. And they play Brooks County this week. <clears throat> That's going to be an interesting matchup. It is. Um, uh, Thomasville is better than the record indicates, if you ask me. Um, they are, they've lost to TCC, Thomas County Central, and Westminster. Westminster is a solid ball club. It's in the playoffs every year, so um, no shame in that loss. It was fourteen to twenty four, and then got got the big goose egg against TCC, thirty eight to nothing. Which hey, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> I went down there two weeks ago and said, yeah, they. I look for Thomas County Central to go deep in the playoffs, if not win at all. Yeah. Uh, but their their region consists of Brooks, Fitzgerald, Thomasville, Barry and Pelham, Cook, and Early. Mm-hmm. It's just a solid region, man. It really it is. is. Um, Brooks to me, County's, that, you know, if you want to call Tiff County the surprise or Cinderella, whatever you want to call them, to me in that region, Barry is going to be the – that beat a dark horse or surprise. Well, Barion's three and one. Um, their only loss coming to Turner County right. the week before last, I believe. Which and they had a big lead in that one, and I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't um, know either. But they've got a good coach down there. They do. They have a real fine coach. They get Early County this week, and then Thomasville the following week. Right. So 
They actually start their region play this week. It's going to be an interesting uh, matchup. So um, I tell you what we can do, Mike. If you if you like, we're gonna we've started a segment on here where we all three, all three of we, us we, pick a game, including Donovan, who who can't even spell football. He's going to F U. <laughs> Might need the you. <laughs> I didn't know where he was going. <laughs> I, <didn't either. laughs> I was kind of a little worried there. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my, he's talking ugly to me." Um, Football. There you go. Well, you you got it figured out then. So we're all going to pick, but we'll go game by game and we'll talk about the game okay. and, and who they got if you want to. Is that cool with you? Yeah, that's fine. What we did was took ten teams, random. Uh, a lot of them is from around here. Of course, we got the three region games. Sure. And. Uh, you want, to, you want to tackle the first one? Yeah, we'll start with Lee County at Hardaway. Um, Lee County's got a good program. They're on the rise. Right. Um, they're going to blow Hardaway away. Okay, well, we're one for one then because I actually picked Lee County to win that one. You got Lee County winning? Yeah. Donovan? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Right on. Lee County. <laughs> okay. Well, good. <laughs> It's agreed. They, Lee County, so Hardaway's going to So right now, we, we, next week, we all going to be 1-0 or 0-1 oh, 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 on that one. Yeah, I will be shocked if Lee County um, loses. So I don't even know who Hardaway is. So uh, Hardaway was a uh, R- uh, pop singer from the mid-'90s that sang a song called What is Love. If you want to Google that, that will be. But now, we we talking football. We know oh, my love songs. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, Hardaway is, I Columbus. believe they're out of Columbus area, right? Mm-hmm. So. They sure are. So, um, next game, Fitzgerald at Cook. Take your pick. <laughs> no, I'm going to give my picks, and you're going to go the opposite of me. So no, uh can... um, I've got my picks already circled, so I can't change mine. I don't, something tells me not to, but I'm taking Cook. Okay, well, something told me to take Cook. I've got some kids on there that I have coached in the past in baseball, but I had to listen to my gut, which I got a pretty good gut. Uh, and I'm picking Fitzgerald. You're going Fitzgerald. Uh, I just, you know, I'm sorry, Cook County folks, but uh, that's a deal, baby. Uh, I think Cook is is on the rise because they got a lot of young talent. Uh, the, the quarterback's a sophomore. Uh, they got a uh, receiver. That is a sophomore. I coach both of them in baseball. Phenomenal athletes. Um, it was a privilege for me to be able to coach them. Great parents. So, uh, but you know, I, I'm gonna have to take the purple hurricanes on this one. Okay. So, so I hope I've, you know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm taking Cook. You're taking Fitzgerald. Yep. Donovan. Do I have a choice? <laughs> it's got to be Fitzgerald. Donovan is a Fitzgerald alum and. That explains native, a lot. Native son of Fitzgerald, and yeah, it's all making sense now. Yeah, yeah. Now well, see, the last good football team that we had over there was 1988. Oh, okay. Which is the year I graduated, so. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. So. <clears throat> oh, um, well, I didn't know I was speaking out loud. Um, so, next game, Berrien at, at early. early. I don't know. You tell me. Uh, I picked Barron. Barron, uh, I think because, they, like I said earlier, they're going to be the surprise of that region. Uh, Ed Pilcher's got them kids down there playing and believing they can win. Uh, don't know a whole lot about early. I uh, did look them up a little bit. Uh, but there again, I got some kids on that team I coach too. Uh, so I got the, you know, my heart's going with, with Barron, so we'll see. Donovan, you got a pick in that game? Well, I'm never early, so I have to go with Berrien. You're just going to play on words <laughs> on all of these, aren't you? And I love it. That's okay. I, I'm taking early, the Bobcats. <clears throat> and the only reason why is because Berrien, I agree, they're on, a, they're on the rise. They're on the up and up. But they, they don't know how to beat early yet. They're not quite there. Um, now, next year... They might be there, but I just don't think they'll do it this week. Okay. So I'm taking the early Bobcats. They, their losses have been close losses against Brooks and I think Thomasville 
And I think they played the Falcons one week, too, and it was close. Actually, Seminole. I'm sorry. It was Seminole, who's a pretty solid team, too. So I'm going with early. I wasn't okay. sure. I had to look at their record before I uh, I made figured my you would have to. So and that's yeah. what I did. So next game. Uh, I guess that brings us to Thomasville at Brooks County. No, you skipped Irwin. Irwin. Did I, oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. We skipped Irwin County at Terrafield. Uh, yeah, I'm going. I picked Irwin County on this one. I think that's uh, kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean. But now the wild card is what is Donovan going to pick? That's a big rivalry between the Purple Hurricanes. I just don't believe he can pick Irwin. And the you know, Irwin. If he's from Fitzgerald. The Irwin County. Well, I started too, but then I remembered that my first wife was from Irwin County, so I got to go with Telfair. <laughs> good call. That's, that's I love a good it. reason. <laughs> Nothing, nothing good about people in Irwin <laughs> County, other that had a boy. Um, great, <clears throat> Thomasville at Brooks. I don't know. I'm gonna flip a coin, but I ain't. I'm too poor to carry one. Um, um, call it. I'm gonna have to go Brooks because they have a difference maker in that quarterback they got, man. They do, and I'm just. I'm going Brooks. I took Brooks. Uh, uh, for the simple fact, you know, the tragedy they had down there, they're playing with a lot of motion still. Uh, and, you know, it's Thomasville. You know, I looked at them. They got blowed out by Thomas County Central. Uh, Brooks is 4-1. Uh, now, the one loss they did have was against uh, Valdosta. Uh, it, they, it was kind of lopsided, which they're getting it. You know, normally they play a little better than that. Uh, but that's the reason I picked Brooks County Trojans. I got to go with Thomasville simply because I have friends down in Thomasville. In low places? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, Thomasville is kind of a low place, I it guess. It is. So, well. It was a low place two weeks ago when we was down there. <laughs> it we sure left. was. It really was. All right. Next game, Turner at Charlton County. Boy, this game here. I mean, Charlton's down a little bit. They are. Now, if it, this had been five years ago, it would have been a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, Turner's playing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Need another coin? I don't know who to pick. I said I could – I told you that I didn't even need yeah, to just, research this. And I even sent you the list this afternoon about you 2 did. o'clock. You gave me plenty of time for the list. I'm going Charlton. Okay. Well, I went with Turner. I knew you would. That's why I went so, Charlton. You know, um, I want to go with Turner, but I can't do it. You got an ex-wife or? <laughs> yeah, I got a, you, an ex-lover in Turner. We, <laughs> I can't remember his name, but he was. Oof. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, I coming out of the closet. I'm telling you. <laughs> this will be the last week I'm co-hosting. <laughs> uh, I uh, No, I, I think Turner, really, honestly, deep down, Turner's probably the better ball team. It's in Charlton County. That is a pretty, I mean, that, it's, hey, you got to get there by helicopter, but it it's kind of a, a good atmosphere whenever it's down there and people are pumping. Now, I haven't been down there in years. I was down right. there for a playoff game years ago, but uh, I was asked not to come back, and yet I'm still taking, that. I'm still taking Charlton County. So, um, go engines. Donovan? Only thing I can think of is, you know, Charlton Heston, and he was a great actor, so I'll <laughs> go with Charlton. <laughs> you know? Hey, I love it. That is so awesome. He's going to whip our butts. You know, yeah, he's probably out. right. He's going to go undefeated. This is probably the only week we do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, next game has got Peachtree Ridge, which is – what was they in the state? Fifth? Oh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't look at that. Uh, is Collins Hill ranked in the state? They was not in the top ten. Uh, I picked Peachtree Ridge. Me too. Uh, I think they are a better football team. I looked at Collins Hill, some of the teams they played, uh, and I looked at Peachtree Ridge also. I just think Peachtree Ridge has had better wins. You know, I hadn't seen either one of these teams play so. Well, a lot of former athletes, kids, go to Peachtree Ridge if they're in a private school. Right. Or in a public school. They go to Uh, Peachtree Ridge, and that's why I'm taking them. Um, If it was wrestling, girls basketball, Collins Hill would be my choice. But it's not. Maybe even tennis. But it's not, so I'm going Peachtree Ridge. 
Well, Tom Collins is an excellent drink, so I've got to go with Collins Hill. Here, here. <laughs> Oh, he's killing me. Tonight. He is. <laughs> but hey, but they're good fit. I mean, they are. Hey, you can't go wrong with them. Just think if we'd give him more notice than what we did. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Uh, Just imagine if we'd gave him some Tom Collins. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? We had any over here in the fridge? <laughs> we could. We could. All right, get the region play. All right. First up, we got Camden at Coffee County. What you think? Does one team go two and zero, oh, and the other one zero oh and two, or do they both come out there one and one? I think Coffee really thinks they can beat Camden. I think Camden knows they can beat Coffee. I don't think Camden realizes really deep down that they can beat Camden. That way, I just that was just a double negative, I believe. But, I think it was. Um, Camden is going to win this game. Um, Coffee could win it. They don't realize it within themselves. They can beat them yet. I'm afraid. So, I have seen on a, a event a little bit some smack talk between the two. So I have. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Coffee depends on how they bounce back from you know getting upset by Tiff County last week, which I don't think was upset. Uh, I did pick Camden in a close ball game. Uh, I believe it'd be less than a touchdown. Uh, but who knows? I mean, Jordan. Stadium is is a tough place to play. Uh, you know, coffee may pull up the. I guess that would be an upset since Camden was ranked down. Yeah, sure. But uh, I'm going with Camden to get their second regional win. Well, I don't function well in the morning or in the afternoon <laughs> unless I have coffee. So I kind of have to go with coffee here. Okay. I knew that was coming. All right. You're getting predictable now. We're almost to the end of the list. You're becoming predictable. That's good. <laughs> Lounds, Lounds at Brunswick. Lounds at Brunswick. Who you got? I'm taking Lounds. You're taking Lounds. I mean, uh, come on. Not so fast, my oh, friend. Oh, no. As Mr. Lee Corso said. No way. I'm actually picked Brunswick to upset Lounds again. Upset Lounds. Well, beat them. I think Lounds. would be an upset. I think Lounds is down. I think. Uh, the scores that they had that they run up on the little small teams they played was a on a, a sign of hey we're big and bad we can score these many points but coffee can I mean Coffee County didn't care who they were you know they they spanked them pretty good Brunswick is a tough place to play uh, so I picked Brunswick to beat uh, Lounge. And besides wow. that, I'm going to play on Donovan here. I love Brunswick too. So. <laughs> Damn it! Did I take your line? <laughs> you you did. I was oh, I'm say, sorry. Two words: Brunswick stew. Okay. Okay. So, all right, we're on the same well, we, page. We're thinking alike. How about there you, that? There you go. Okay. Wow. And when Brunswick wins Friday night, you can bring us Brunswick stew That's next right. Tuesday night. It's Denty Moore. No. Nah. Demi Moore. That would be better. Okay. Mary Tyler Moore. Too old. Okay. Well, which one? Both? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I guess that brings us to the game Our of the week. big matchup. Tiff County at Coffee County. Will this be the Devil's Lair game of the week? We can call it that. Yeah. You know. Every Which game Tiff, we play should be the game Tiff of the Tiff County week. is our game of the week every week. Every week. I agree. So. Um, well, what you got? I'm in a quandary. I mean, we got a show called The Devil's Lair dedicated to Tiff County Athletics. Do I pick Colquitt? I mean, that don't make sense. That's your choice. I mean, if you want to be on a losing side, yes. I mean, I'll get run out of Tiff County. I'm almost there now. Yeah, there's a petition going around now. You don't know about (laughs) it. Yeah. (laughs) Is that what I signed earlier? Okay. Oh, my. Um, I mean, just because I started it. But anyway. Let's see. The number three team in the state takes on unranked Tiff County. There's... How many D1 recruits on there? Like four? Oh, okay. Five. A lot of JUCO guys that's going to end up in it. We got a handful of kids that are going to go to college and play. Man, I've got to go, Colquitt. I got to. But I'm going Tiff County. I'm baiting you in like Corso. I don't have headgear to put on. We'll get El Diablo. I'll get the head back here. We'll get El Diablo or T Bird. I'll get the T Bird. Or them little devil horns that we. 
hey, we should have had them. Should have had them. So I'm taking Tift. We're going to win this week. We're going to shock the world. And uh, we're going to eat some eat some pig Friday night. So, Okay, since you did all that play, it's my turn to play, right? <laughs> uh, I went back and looked since 2000. You know how many times Tift County has beat Colquitt? I give up. Three times. Uh, and I had the dates wrote down, or the years wrote down. You need an iPad. Uh, I had a yellow pad, and you made fun of it, so, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't bring it back, so it's in my truck. Uh, but it's been, I think, since 2008, maybe, that we beat them. Uh, you know, they, they played the the big team, you know, uh, Hoover and got beat. Uh, they, they played a pretty tough schedule so far. But I actually picked Tiff County to go down there. I know this week's a big week for them there. Thursday night, they've got a uh, some kind of big thing that they bring in. Uh, one Bill, of their, Bill Curry's coming in Curry to talk. To talk to so, I mean, they're going to be pumped up. Uh, <clears throat> but if you had to stay after the game Friday night and seen our kids the way they was pumped up, the coaches was pumped up, uh, I guarantee you Tiff County had a heck of a practice this week or will have a heck of a practice. Uh, Hey, I, I picked them all year long. I, I can't go against the Devils, you know. Born and raised, bleed blue and white. You got to pick the Devils. That's right. Donovan? Well, since I know nothing about nothing, <laughs> I'll go with Colquitt. <laughs> he took Colquitt. Okay. He took Colquitt. Okay. All right. Okay. All so right. there we have it. And, and it is. Hey, tell him what this show's all about when we go off air. Okay? <sighs> well. It's about two old guys ain't got nothing better to do <laughs> saying talk about football. Two sexy fat guys. Two, like, two sexy fat guys on the internet. Taking over the internet. Uh, but hey, we have a lot of fun. I do. I'm glad that I've been here the last four weeks. Uh, yeah, it's but, always a pleasure. So where are we at on time? Are we good? I don't know what time it is. My, my y'all pad is shot out. 47 minutes. Oh my okay. goodness. My longest one we've had all year probably. So I guess we need to wrap it up. I we do, do want to mention, what do you got? You got something else? Uh, I know the Lady Devils played today. Yes. That's I what do I not. They played at four o'clock. I don't know. I know they, they had a rain out last week and they played like, uh, what's the other, Valdosta. And they blew them out like 18 to one, 15 nothing to improve to maybe 24 and one. Uh, the games today would have been pretty much because Tiff County's at no, I'm sorry, they're twenty two and one. Yeah, twenty two and one. And I think Lounge was like they had three losses, so today was basically for first place. I, I don't know what has happened, uh, but I do know they're playing Saturday at home. They're hosting uh, Camden. I it was Camden County. Camden County. Then playoffs will start next week. So <coughs> you know, playoffs best. actually start Wednesday, October sixteenth. Oh, so they're gonna give them yeah. one. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, Tifton's going to be at least worst case scenario. They're going to be a two seed. Uh, that means we will host the first round, possibly second round, third round. Yeah, hopefully uh, we'll have but, some games. Know, we need to go out and support them also. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, um, yeah, I mean that record is phenomenal, man. And what's bad is they're not getting any. I'm not hearing anything about it. Yeah. No, so, not reading anything in the paper. But yeah, that's another story. That's right. So, so good luck to the Lady Devils. Um, we may have some things in the works with them shortly. Come playoff time. Um, appreciate everybody's support. Um, a lot of people at the games, you know, coming up to me talking about it and our show in general. And there's always, always, always a chance to uh, be a part of the show. Um, you can catch us on our Twitter handle, it's uh, Devil's Lair One. Um, our Instagram is Tift Tiff County Devil's Lair, right? No, am I wrong? I can't remember. I don't keep up with this stuff for you. Man, it, I don't. I got it all saved. I can't keep all that mess up. What do I look like? I got a show or something? Mm -hmm. Well, another thing that we'd also like to bring up is, uh, as I can get to it. Sponsorships. Go ahead. Um, if you go to TiffCountyDevilsLair.com and go to, uh, well, we got a menu at the top where you got home, watch now, the show. If you hover over the show, there's an option called sponsoring the show. And what we do 
is you can show your support by sponsoring an episode of this fine show, and it's $20 per episode. And what you'll be getting for your company, your product, or your brand will recognize you as a supporter of this show. And uh, just go there and fill out the information. Like I said, it's $20 per show. We also have a little thing that we're calling uh, shout-outs. So, like, if you want to, uh, you know, you want to do a shout-out to your buddy or something like that, and, of course, we want to, you know, it's got to be clean. Right. Uh, I mean, this is a family show. Is it really? Yeah, Probably. yeah, it should be. You know, I'm trying. I'm really trying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll do, uh, for $5, we'll do shout-outs. It'll be like a simple one- or two-line uh, shout-out recommended. And, um, you know. I mean, anything Tiff County related, yeah. athletic-wise. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you want to do a shout-out to your buddy who, who happens to be on the football team or, you know, whatever, that's that's the idea. Uh, for the shout outs and of course the uh the twenty dollar sponsorship is for like, you know, if a company wants to, you know, say that show their support for uh, you know, supporting the devil's lair and of course we'll give them a little, you know, right at the beginning of the show and say this this particular episode is sponsored by XYZ, you know, whoever it is. Sure. Which is cheap. Yeah, very cheap. Yeah, it's very, very cheap. Yeah. I mean, you know for the we, quality show they get. That's right. That's right. We toyed around with it. I mean the value that you'll be getting is worth, you know, several hundred dollars, mm-hmm. but it's only going to cost you 20 That's right. So um, jump on that now. Um, I'll go through our social media again. It's at, at Devil's Lair 1, which I got correct. Um, Facebook is under TC Devil's Lair, um, and Instagram is TC Devil's Lair. So enjoy that. I try to. I, I forgot to snap pictures Friday night. I've been trying to snap pictures and send them on Instagram and and Twit, Twitter, Twitter, whatever it's called, and uh, Facebook and and trying to link everything together. I'm I'm a social media guru now. I I almost know how to do everything except know my handles. Uh, so um, we appreciate all your support again. Thank you, Player Spotlight. Submit one. We're working on a couple. We've we got in mind. Um, got, got a lot of good things working here at the Devil's Lair. Takes some, takes support from you guys to make that happen. Um, until next week, I'm Randy Meadows. I'm Mike Tucker. And fear the pitchfork. Go Big Blue.